Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, I'm going to show you my take on how to play the very famous Purdy Shuffle as uh, represented in Babylon Sisters by Steely Dan, Home at Last as well by the same, and uh, Rosanna, Jeff Porcaro's beautiful groove uh, in the Toto song there. Uh, it's one of those must-know grooves, and although it's been covered quite a few times in the various videos and whatever by other people, um, somebody asked me to uh, demonstrate this, and I thought, what the hell, I'll just throw my own take out there, and maybe it helps someone get the hang of this very famous groove. Um, it's a, obviously it's a shuffle, it's the Purdy shuffle, and uh, the, the whole trick with this thing is getting the ghost notes to sound good. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can do it. Something in the neighborhood of that. Now, what have we got here? What are the ingredients? First things first, I'm going to be counting this as eighth notes. And um, it's one of those annoying things. A lot of people call this a halftime shuffle, which would um, suggest it's, it is sort of playing eighth notes, one and a two and a three and a four and a. Um, but I think in the, the, um, the versions or the songs that I know that have this groove in it, it's, a, it's really a 16th note shuffle. Um, so the snare would be on the two and four, but uh, for convenience sake, to be able to count it, we're going to count it as eighth note triplets, and the snare accent's going to be on the three rather than the, the two. We're going to play, I don't know, in half a bar or something. But anyway, we're going to count like this, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And the shuffle in that case is played on the number and the uh of each group of triplets, on the first and third partials of the triplet, as it would be called uh, if, for those of us in the know. And so that means we get this humpty dumpty humpty dumpty shuffled feel, right? So we get one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And we're going to play the hi hat with the tip of the stick on top of the cymbals to start with, it gives us a nice crisp sound. Now, the clever thing about this groove is the way ghost notes are inserted in between the notes of the shuffle, and that means in triplet terms, it's on the and of each group of three notes. So we'd have one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, which would be your snare ghost notes. Um, we're also going to have, as I said, a backbeat and accented snare drum note on the three, but to start with, to get the, the feel of this right, we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to play between the two hands with the ghost note in between. So we'd have something like this. And we want to try and get the ghost note to be as soft as possible, but still have a little bit of attack. You want to hear the little um, high-end snap of the stick against the snare head. Um, so if you're kind of too relaxed, it gets a little bit mushy and indistinct. We want to be able to get the articulation of the ghost note, and that is something that's really challenging. When you watch someone like Purdy playing this, I don't know, he seems to produce a really great crisp sound and doesn't really seem to be moving very much. So who knows how that works. But when you're sitting and practicing this, this is what you're looking to do. Nice, crisp hi-hat, nice, soft ghost notes that also have crispness to them. And if that feels in any way uncomfortable, 
sit with that and play that nice and slowly as long as it takes for it to feel that you have that nice triplety flow. Um, as always, I recommend counting while you're doing that, at least some of the time helps you focus in on, on your timing. You can then add the bass drum to that, so just like this. It allows your body to start getting used to the coordination before we assault it with the demands of putting the uh, accented snare drum, the backbeat, in there. Okay, but let's move on to that. We had our uh, triplet count, we had the ghost notes on the uh, and, the middle triplet of every count. Uh, and people count triplets in different ways. One anna, two anna is uh, my preferred option. You can count your triplets any way you like, as long as you understand where everything goes. Now we're going to play an accented snare on the three, so uh, I'm going to be playing the ghost note on the and of the one, the and of the two, but then I'm going to leave it for the three because I'm going to be playing the accented snare on the three itself. So the middle triplet is going to be empty, and then on the four we're back to playing a ghost note on the middle of the triplet. So it's going to be like this, no bass drum, we're just going to concentrate on the hands. One and a two and a three and a four and a... We're looking for a really nice flow of the triplets and you might notice that your body reacts a little bit when you're trying to negotiate between having a very soft ghost note and then having to pull back on the stick and give a little bit more energy to the stroke for that backbeat. And while you're doing that, you might notice that the nice feeling of the shuffle that you've, you've worked out with the, the ghost notes on their own uh, gets maybe a little bit disrupted. Maybe not, maybe you're okay, but I would work on that for a little while and make sure that that's all flowing nicely and notice there's the sort of tempo I'm playing at and you can always go slower. Once you've got the hand pattern feeling okay, you can put the bass on the one. Again, reminding you we're counting one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So we'll put the bass drum in there and when you do that, try and notice, is your ghost note getting disrupted? Are you starting to play the ghost notes a bit louder? Is the uh, crisp evenness of your hi-hat getting disrupted? You know, notice whether or not introducing that extra limb kind of throws things off a little bit. Often it does, and whether it does or doesn't, just sit with that whole thing for a little while, like so. Now, if that's feeling good, let's vary a little bit the bass drum, or let, let's, let's embellish and add to that. So the first thing I recommend doing is playing, and you don't have to follow this order. Once you've got the general idea of what I'm demonstrating to you here, do whatever you like. Um, but the, the, I guess the idea is, is to um, take the concept of how we break this stuff down, and, and you can then change the way it happens, but the general principle is there, right? We're looking at little elements that we can uh, build from something simpler to something a bit more complex. But um, I'm rambling now, aren't I? We're going to take that um, bass drum and we're going to add it on the R uh of the fourth triplet. So we're going to have bass on the one and the R uh of the four. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Okay, like this. Now with that extra bit of bass drum to negotiate, things get a little bit wobbly and 
I would sit with that at a slow tempo for as long as you can. Maybe record yourself doing it, maybe put a metronome on, and just see if you can get that sounding really nice and even. Now, a lot of the time we want to kind of just jump in and, and get on with things and, and move things forward. We don't always want to sit at first and just be very slow and careful. And if you feel like doing that, that's cool. But remember that you can always then come back and rewind and, and slow things down at a later date and tighten it up. So if you want to kind of uh, play things faster, that's, that's okay. But remember that to make it sound right, you're going to have to slow it down and be a little bit meticulous with it and repeat the damn thing a lot. Now, once we can play the bass on the R of the fourth triplet, um, let's add another bass drum on the R of the second triplet, which comes just before the snare note. So we'll have three bass drum notes. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three, four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. Okay, sounds a bit like this. And if you want to speed it up a little bit, you can, you can do, oh, no, oh, my sleeves are annoying me now. Um, if you want to speed it up a little bit, you can do, see what happens. And you can start to then think, when it's flowing a little bit, when it's starting to automate itself in your body, notice a little bit, are you tensing up here or there? Are there any particular parts of the groove that are jumping out at you as uh, you know, wanting to be smoothed or, or sorted out timing-wise? Next, let's see if we can put the bass drum on the R of the third triplet as well, why not? So we'll go, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a what am i doing Finally, let's put the bass drum on the and of, oh, sorry, not the and, but the R of the first triplet. Um, and let's take out the one on the R of the third triplet. So we're going to play uh, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. So now we've got the, the four R's covered on the bass and the one as well. Uh, five, did I say, I said finally already, didn't I? Well, how do I resolve something after I've said finally? Uh, last but not, uh, last but not, that doesn't work either. So finally, part one, now part two, improvise. That doesn't work either, okay. I shouldn't have said finally before. Final, finally we're going to improvise. So we can play the bass drum on the R of the one, the R of the two, the R of the three, the R of the four. We can just play the one, we can play only the R's, whatever. We're gonna try and change the bass drum pattern on the fly. That's always an important component of this uh, sort of vocabulary acquisition exercise. So let's see if I can do that.
that's it. Do it again at a slightly faster speed if you like. Uh, and finally, stick on Home at Last, play along to it, see if that works. Stick on Rosanna and play along to it, see if it works. I haven't covered the exact grooves there, but you can do that. I mean, you could do it with any slow shuffle song, really. Um, but that's it. You want to get to the point that you can cover all those different bass drum patterns. Now, this is not an exhaustive um, uh, lesson, so I'm trying to give you a reasonably brief introduction to a, a procedure for working through this. So if you get the hang of those bass drum notes, I'm sure you can work out a load of other options you could do. You could turn it into a two-bar phrase as well, because uh, as I said, uh, this is really a 16th note groove. So when you're counting to four and eighth notes, that's only half a bar. So what might be a, a cool idea after this is to mix the bass drum patterns between the first and second bars, which would give you a 16th note pattern. So um, maybe if this goes down well, if this looks okay, I'll do another follow-up video suggesting some ideas about that. But that is kind of at least an introductory uh, presentation, if you like, on how to play the Purdy Shuffle. The key thing is, go from the, the simple to the more complex, listen to yourself very carefully as you go, record yourself um, and listen back, and just really focus on getting all the elements nicely balanced. And that kind of wraps that up for today. As always, I've forgotten to advertise myself earlier in this video, so please don't forget yourself to like, subscribe, and very much comment on my videos. Notice that people who comment and ask me for stuff very often get um, a video explaining the thing they asked me to explain. If it's something that I know about anyway, I'll do my best to, um, to do that. And uh, I guess that, that's that really. Go away and practice.